If you are planning a July trip to Iceland, then get excited, my friends, because today I have the most comprehensive guide for planning your July trip to this beautiful country. Hey Team Iceland, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jeannie and I am your tour guide for all things Iceland planning. Before we get into this video, it's time to give a little Instagram love. So today I wanna to give a shout out to Andrea who tagged me in a video showing me her granddaughter quoting one of my YouTube videos and my heart just melted. So this is the most amazing thing to see that people are finding the videos helpful and then people are quoting the videos. I mean, the coolest thing ever. So thank you so much, Andrea, for sharing and make sure to tell your granddaughter hi for me. Today, I'm excited to talk to you about July planning for your trip to Iceland, including daylight hours, weather, sightseeing, and all of the things. So let's get into it. All right, so first and foremost, like we talk about every month, Daylight hours are the most important thing when you're planning any trip to Iceland. July is a pretty special month because we're still pretty much at the peak of daylight hours. So just coming off the summer solstice in June, you can expect around 19 hours of daylight in July. As you can tell, there's still plenty and plenty of daylight hours for exploring. This is important, you guys, because as a contrast to some of the winter months, you have so much more free time and so much more time to pack things into your itinerary. So July is such a wonderful month in terms of that. Which brings me to my pro tip. Do not, under any circumstances, forget a sleep mask for your July trip to Iceland. This is by far going to be your biggest lifesaver for getting any sleep in July. 19 hours means that the sun is still out at 10 p.m. And I'm talking like it feels like it's still seven o'clock. So I'm telling you, you're gonna wanna have a sleep mask with you so you can at least get some sleep and feel like, you know, a normal night. Moving on to the weather in Iceland in July. Average temperatures will be between 9 to 14 degrees Celsius or 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It's so funny because a lot of places around the world, July is like one of the hottest summer months, right? Not in Iceland, my friends. July is not warm. Don't be coming to Iceland in July thinking that you're gonna get this summer vacation. <laughs> As you heard me say in videos before, there are two seasons in Iceland, winter and winter light. So July is still winter light. With this being said, July is actually one of the warmest and driest months of the year. So there'll be times where there's plenty and plenty of sun. And actually, if there's not a lot of wind, then it can feel quite warm. I gotta be careful when I use that word. You always still need to be prepared for high winds and misty rains as well. So I can't promise that the weather will be perfect even if it's July. And if you guys are wondering what you should pack in your suitcase for your summer trip, then make sure to check out that video that I've made completely about that where I go through all of the items and what to bring in your suitcase. Now, in terms of sightseeing for July, the good news is that all of Iceland is open and available for you to travel to, including Reykjavik, Golden Circle, Ring Road, Snifelsnes Peninsula, West Fjords, and the Highlands. Every area is accessible, available, and with obviously the right equipment and vehicle, able to travel to. Yay! We love, 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 love July. I'm seriously, I love July in Iceland. It's so unique, it's so beautiful. You have the lush green landscapes, you have flowers blooming, you have animals roaming all about. It is literally like the peak, most beautiful time to be in Iceland. Obviously the con of this is that everyone knows that July is great in Iceland, so you're gonna be able to expect uh, more crowds, higher prices on rentals and accommodations, busier roads, you know, the standard. Speaking of roads, driving in July in Iceland is also easy. The roads are clear, they're accessible, you can easily get to all parts of the country, and usually, unless you're traveling in the Highland Roads or the F Roads, which we've just talked about in a recent video, 
you can use a two-wheel drive for traveling to Iceland in the summer. Obviously, if you're traveling into the highlands, then then you definitely need a four-wheel drive, but usually you're gonna be good in the summer with two-wheel drive. Last up are the events and festivals that happen in July. So this is a really big month in terms of music festivals. A lot of small little towns will have their own little version of some sort of festival, whether it's music, art, or both. But the main ones that I wanted to talk about are number one, Lungau. This is a festival that happens in Seyðisfjörður in East Iceland, and it features art and music, and it takes place in one of the most scenic fjords in Iceland. Another festival in July is called Breslan. This one takes place in an old herring factory in Borgafjörður Estri, and it features folk and indie rock music. Such a fun thing to experience. Okay friends, now that you are experts on how to plan your July trip to Iceland, if you're still struggling on how to put together an itinerary, then make sure to check out my Ring Road ebook and map. It covers literally everything that you would need to know on how to plan a trip to Iceland as well as a digital map that can get you to some of the coolest places around the country. Check in the description box below for the link to the book. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, friends. I'll see you next Wednesday for another Iceland planning video. And until then, happy planning.